Good morning. As you may have noticed already, we don't have an organist today. Uh, but we do have an organist's husband who is able to play a CD of most of uh, the uh, uh, responses in our service. And so uh, we should have most of the responses sung, but not all of them. Some of them uh, will need to be spoken, and, and uh, we'll kind of talk about that as we go along. But I think you'll be able to figure out that the longer parts will be sung and the shorter parts will be spoken. Uh, we'd like to welcome those of you who are watching us online or listening on the radio. May God bless you as well with his presence and peace as we continue to celebrate the great glory of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a few announcements to get to today. First of all, we will be installing church officers at both of our services today. Uh, that'll take place right after the sermon, so if you are one of our officers, uh, you'll be invited to come forward at that time. Tomorrow night, our church leaders will be meeting, starting at 6 o'clock with the elders and then 7 o'clock with the full church council. Uh, I will not be present. Uh, tomorrow's the day I'm heading down to Rochester for uh, another scan of my brain to make sure that I'm still cancer-free, and hopefully I will be, so uh, I won't be able to join you guys uh, tomorrow night. We will have confirmation class this week, so if you are a confirmation student in 7th or 8th grade, please remember to come and join us on Wednesday. Uh, if you were or are a member of an organization that is required to turn in an annual report of some kind, you are reminded that uh, next Sunday is the deadline for turning that in, so please submit your report as soon as possible. Uh, our bell choir is having a meeting this Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Everyone is invited to come. You do not need any sort of musical experience uh, to be part of the bell choir. Um, everyone's invited. Uh, I think we've had uh, young kids be part of it before. We've had elderly people. We've had other people. Uh, so uh, everyone is invited to be part of the bell choir uh, if you are so moved. Our Lutheran Witness subscriptions are due, and they are being taken by Robin. If you would like to subscribe to the Lutheran Witness, uh, there, we also have an extra large print version. So, so for those of you who struggle to read uh, the regular size print, we do have an extra large print available as well. If you'd like one, just let Robin know. Uh, and you have until the 28th uh, to talk to Robin about that. Uh, I did not know her, but apparently uh, many of you did. Carolyn Weiss uh, passed away on December 28th, uh, so I wanted to share that news with you. Uh, I don't know any other details other than that, but I know that she was an important part of our church for many years, and, and so we ask uh, the Lord to receive her into his uh, loving arms and to carry her home. Our order of service for today is Divine Service Setting 3. We do celebrate our Lord's Supper today. Our opening hymn is hymn 397, As with Gladness Men of Old. May God bless us as we hear his word and receive his sacrament.
Creed 184 uh, by remembering our baptisms with these words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, and bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful boy. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro for today is printed out for you in your bulletins. It is taken from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry for glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. We continue now with the glory of Patri and the Kyrie.
words will be spoken. So, the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as at the baptism in the Jordan River, you once proclaimed Jesus as your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized in his name may faithfully keep the covenant in, into which they have been called, boldly confess him to be their Savior, and with him the heirs of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Genesis, the very first chapter. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Christians living in Rome, chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise and we do sing our Alleluia and verse. Who for us men and for our salvation 
came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue now by singing our sermon hymn, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord, hymn 405. so much that they actually used it as part of their graduation speech, but they used it incorrectly. That's because, unfortunately, that's not the entire quote, but it is what most people remember, and sadly, it's what most people choose to do. They sin boldly. Our culture certainly celebrates all kinds of sexual immorality without worrying about any kinds of consequences or responsibilities. Homosexuals have pride parades. Transgender people receive special privileges that no one else seems to receive. Divorce is as rampant now as it has ever been. Women are encouraged to shout their abortions. Families don't go to church together anymore. 
much less pray together before meals or at bedtime. The fact is that being a genuine Christian these days, it's a difficult thing to do. And if you aren't afraid to live out your faith, then you can be fairly certain that you'll face some kind of persecution for it. It could be something as simple as someone choosing to spend their time with other people rather than you because those other people make them feel less uncomfortable. Or you could be mocked, you could be physically attacked, you could perhaps even be killed. Now, of course, those other things are less likely to happen in our country, but it certainly does happen in other countries. You see, the culture in which we are living is not unlike a desert wilderness. Jesus is the living water, and much of our culture simply doesn't want to have anything to do with him. That's why our world is such a desert. And the response of God's holy saints who are living in this desert wilderness has always been the same. To call the people around them to repentance. That certainly was the case for ancient Israel. For over 300 years, they waited to hear a prophetic voice. That's longer than we as a country have even existed. But sadly, none was heard. So when John the baptizer came along, the people were literally dying of thirst because they had been waiting a long time to hear one of God's prophets speaking his word to them. And now John the Baptist had finally come to do that. And when he appeared, where was he? In the wilderness. And he had a specific job to do, to proclaim that all people needed to repent and be baptized. And his voice was so powerful that the people responded by coming in droves to the Jordan River. John played the role of an Old Testament prophet. He was clothed in camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And as the angel had proclaimed about 30 years before, John had come to prepare the way for the Messiah. And he did it faithfully and humbly. He said that the one who was mightier than he was had finally come. And that this Messiah was so great that John wasn't even worthy to stoop down and untie his shoes. Now we just finished celebrating the coming of that Messiah yesterday. For those of you who don't know it, that's what the 12 days of Christmas are. They are the 12 days from December 25th to June 6th. Today is June 7th. Therefore, today is the first day of Epiphany. The season of Epiphany is about the greatness of God and his wonderful glory as it is revealed to us through the life and works of the God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. And it's with that in mind that I want to tell you the rest of Luther's famous quote. Luther said, be a sinner and let your sins be strong. In other words, sin boldly. But let your trust in Christ be stronger and rejoice in Christ, who is the victor over sin, death, and the world. Luther wrote that in a letter to his good friend, at least at that time, Philip Melanchthon. But even that was part of a larger paragraph. And as various journalists have shown us over the past few years, context matters. And that's definitely the case here. You see, that letter went on to say, We, however, says Peter, the apostle, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where justice will reign. It suffices that through God's glory we have recognized the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. No sin can separate us from Him, even if we were to kill or commit adultery thousands of times each day. Do you think such an exalted Lamb paid merely a small price with a meager sacrifice for our sins? Pray hard, for you are quite a sinner. That paragraph brings us to the New Testament reading for today from Romans chapter 6. 
Now, before I remind you about the content of that text, first, let me remind you of the context. The book of Romans begins by God being described as a wrathful judge. After that, it is declared that all of us are guilty and deserving of his condemnation. But then it says that God has promised to be merciful to us, even though we don't deserve it. And that mercy is ours because of God's Son, who died and rose again for our justification. Therefore, we are righteous by God's grace through faith, even though we're clearly not. It's within that context that the Apostle Paul wrote these words. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Paul went on to declare that we have died with Christ and have been buried with him so that like him we might live in the newness of life. That's the reason that we praise and glorify our Lord, because he is the great high priest, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. For if we have been united in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Now, if I were to sum up the epistle reading for today, it would sound something like this. You are a sinner. But Jesus suffered the punishment you deserved. So now you are righteous. Because God said so. And because Jesus rose again from the dead for your justification. Now be dead to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus. You have this designation of righteousness for one very good reason. You have been baptized into Christ. He died, and someday so will you. But he also rose again from the dead, and someday so will you. As the author of Hebrews wrote multiple times, Christ died once for all, so that all of us who belong to him by faith do not have to fear death. And we don't fear it. Now death has become for us a doorway, leading us through the valley of the shadow of death and into the glorious grandeurs of heaven. One theologian put it this way, quote, Christ associates himself with sinners and ranges himself in the ranks of the guilty, not to find salvation for himself, not on account of his own guilt in his flight from the approaching wrath, but because he is one with the church and the bearer of divine mercy, close quote. In other words, Jesus was not only the reason for the Christmas season, he is the reason for every season of the church year. And that includes the one we have just begun, the season of Epiphany. As I said just a few moments ago, Epiphany is about the revelation of God's glory as he makes it known to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the promised Messiah, the one sent down to earth from the Father to be our good shepherd. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the living water. And in addition to all those other titles, he's also known as the light of the world. And that's the aspect of God's glory that we're directed to remember by today's texts. As you should know, light is a necessary ingredient for life. Without light, there could be no living things. So it should not be surprised to us that the very first thing God created was light. And he spoke it into existence simply by saying, let there be light. And out of nothing, there was light. And it was good. Now I know that people love to misquote the Bible or take it out of context in order to justify their various heretical beliefs. And that includes their belief in evolution. 
The biggest misuse of Scripture to justify that false belief comes from Peter's second letter to his fellow wilderness wanderers. They pounce on his comment, Do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. But they conveniently leave out the context, which was all about why the Lord has not already come back. Yes, our Lord did say that he would come back soon. And now, 2,000 years later, he still hasn't come back. Perhaps that's why some of us have given up hoping that we will see his return. But you should know that the people of Peter's day, the ones he was writing to, they still expected to see it. And when it didn't happen as quickly as they thought it would, the people started to wonder. And it was to them that Peter made his comment about God's perspective of time versus ours. I can't tell you the number of times that non-LCMS non people have questioned the age of the universe and wondered if evolution might not be a possible explanation for it, as though God hasn't already told us the age of the universe. Now, of course, he only has told us the age of the universe if you believe that everything written in his word is true. If you believe that, then there should be no doubt about the age of the universe. Now, we don't know the exact age, of course, but we know that it's much less than what many people think. The universe had a beginning about, well, less than 10,000 years ago. And it began when God spoke it into existence. His first recorded words were, let there be light. And that was the beginning of the first day. There were still six more to come. Now, some people don't understand how there could be light if the sun wasn't created until the third day. But the Hebrew language makes an important distinction between the substance of light versus the source of light. And in the case of God, he was both. He was the light, but he was also the source of the light. At least he was until a couple days later when a lesser a source like the sun could be created. But in those first couple days, God was the light. And he's still the source of light in our world today. Darkness is almost always associated with evil. But light is almost always associated with good and with God. Jesus is the light of the world. Because he's the one who died and then rose again to pay for your sins. Dear friends in Christ, you are still sinners, and so am I. And yet we are also and always forgiven. Luther described us using the Latin phrase, simul justus et peccator. What that means is we are at the same time both sinners and saints. Guilty, yet forgiven. That's what it means to be a follower of Christ. So, sin boldly? I guess so. But only if you're willing and able to trust Jesus even more boldly. And I pray that that's what you will do, now and forevermore. Amen. Now is the time when we install our church officers. So if you are a church officer, I invite you to come forward now, please. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in good order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. 
that we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The Apostle Peter also wrote in his first epistle, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that everything God, in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you have been chosen to serve in a variety of offices and positions here at St. Mark's Lutheran Church. You are to work with me so that our life together may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that erring are admonished, and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly, properly administered and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in the caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of God here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of this congregation, it is especially important that you as office bearers in his church show yourselves by word and devotion and example to be faithful to him in Christian service and devotion. So, in the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept these offices that have been entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, answer, I do. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, who are still seated in the pews, you have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of our church. Do you promise to support them in their work and to remember them in your prayers, to work with them to the best of your ability that God has given you, so that he may be glorified in all things and that his work would be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. We do. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you as officers of St. Mark's Lutheran Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God enliven you and strengthen you in your offices that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Please remain up here. Would the rest of the congregation please rise? Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them, by your Holy Spirit, those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people in the past and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days, we with all your faithful people will hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God preserve you and bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may return to your seats. Our ser you may be seated, by the way. Our service now continues with the collection of our offerings.
Please rise. As their offerings are brought forward, you are invited to sing the offertory.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
join together now in singing the Nuke Diminis, which begins at the bottom of page 199.